So console Valorant has been out for a couple of months now and the it's getting to that point where we need to do a console Valorant agent tier list. The in advance, I know that this video is going to piss off a lot of people and there's just nothing I can really do about that. Because I'm going to be completely honest, not every agent in this game is created equal and your favorite character might just end up in C tier and that's not my fault, it's Riot's fault. Now before we actually get into ranking any of these agents, we need to go over some criteria so you guys know exactly how I am making my list. So for one, the skill ceiling slash max potential is going to play a huge part in these character rankings. For two, the ease of use is also going to play a very, very big factor. Because if I'm, if I'm an average Valorant player and I'm picking up a character and that character is going to be absolutely horrible, you're probably going to want to avoid that character, right? But on the flip side of that, in a pro's hands, that character might be absolutely insane and we need to factor in for those things. The third thing is the difficulty countering that character. So, you know, is, is a character getting shut down very easily? Things like that. And then the final thing is, is that character good on multiple maps or are they just very situational? And I also do want to clarify that not a single character on this list made it into the F or the D tier because honestly, nobody in this game is that bad where you just absolutely should not be picking them. There's almost always, you know, a way that where, where there's a will, there's a way, if you know what I mean. Anyways, though, kicking it off with the C tier, we have four characters, the first one being Yoru. Now I know, I know, Yoru mains are gonna absolutely crucify me in the comments and hear me out. Yoru is an absolutely insane character in the right hands. However, the right hands, you rarely ever see. I've played over 200 ranked games on console Valorant. I have seen one Yoru that really gave my team the work. A single Yoru. The point is, you're going to need to put in a lot of hours before you're actually good enough to, you know, play Yoru without throwing in ranked games. And that's really the main reason in, he's in C tier. He's not bad, he's just very hard to use. Moving on to the second agent in C tier, we have Mr. I suggest you move himself. We got Harbor, and the Harbor being a C tier is pretty self-explanatory. He's another character that's not really bad by any means, but he's very awkward to use. And if you don't really, really know what you're doing on Harbor, he's just not going to be as good of a pick as literally any of the other controllers in the game. The next agent we have in C tier is going to be my boy Chamber. Chamber, in my opinion, is by far the worst Sentinel in this entire game because he's kind of like this sentinel duelist hybrid because he has like a sheriff where you can zoom in. Then he's got like an op, but you can just buy an op. I mean, yeah, it's good for eco rounds, but it's like, I don't know. His kid is just, like I say, it's like, it's like a weird in between and he's just not really good at anything. Like I genuinely think the only reason people play that character at all is just because the revolver is, is kind of nice for pistol rounds and you can zoom in with it, but... Otherwise, yeah, he, he's C tier. He's not great. Moving on to the last agent I have in C tier, it's going to be Astra. And like Harbor and like Yoru, Astra just has a very steep learning curve where if you don't really know what you're doing on Astra, you probably shouldn't be playing Astra. Because also like Harbor, you're just better off picking a different controller that's, you know, easier and more practical to use that doesn't really require, you know, any team play at all. I do want to say though, Astra can definitely be a very, very good pick in the right hands. Coming in as the first agent in B tier, we have the man himself, Brimstone. Now Brimstone is a very, like... He's a very solid character. I don't really have anything bad to say about him, but nothing, you know, too great either, I guess. I will say this, right? When it comes down to controllers, he's not the best, but he does have a lot of uniqueness to his kit where he has the longest lasting smokes in the game. He has three of them. They obviously don't refresh, but the fact that he has three of them means you can do some pushes that you aren't able to do with other controllers. I mean, Unless you obviously have two controllers, then you can do whatever the hell you want, I guess. But, uh, you know, also if you have molly lineups, that does help out a lot. 
and the Brim, I mean, he's just a very solid character. Moving on to the second agent we have in B tier, it's going to be Deadlock. Deadlock is just another agent that is all around very solid. She's definitely not the best sentinel in the game by any means, but she gets the job done. And especially on maps like Sunset or Ascent where you have a really good spot to put your wall, she definitely, you know, makes a much bigger impact. But there are also some maps where she just doesn't feel like she does anything at all. So that's kind of why I have her in B tier. She can be, you know, A tier in certain situations, but she just doesn't excel on enough maps in my personal opinion. Coming in as the third agent in B tier, we have my main Fade. Now, unfortunately, I can't put Fade any higher and I really, really want to because she is my main. But at the end of the day, I can admit she just is not very good overall because on certain maps she is amazing and then other maps you just get almost no value out of her kit and it's it's just going to be a better idea to pick somebody like sky or a different initiator on maps with a lot of tight corners though fade is always going to be an absolutely amazing pick moving on to the fourth agent we have in b tier it's going to be Sage. Sage is just a very, you know, solid character all around. Not the best Sentinel in the game, but her wall can be used, you know, offensively or defensively, which is really good, especially if you actually know good wall spots, which some Sage players do. Some Sage players use the most predictable ones and then just get one tapped immediately. But there are some very, very good walls that people just don't really pay attention to. Also, having the ability to resurrect a teammate is very nice, so long as they don't do it in the open, and then you get farmed immediately, which happens all too often. But moving on to the first agent we have in A tier, it is going to be Phoenix. Now, Phoenix is not the best duelist in the game, don't get me wrong, but the reason he's this high on the list is flashes are very, very good on console. I would actually argue they are way better on console Valorant than they are on PC because on PC, a lot of people are running high sense so they can easily, you know, just turn away from the flash and then turn back and they're fine. But on controller, a lot of people, I would probably say the majority are running very low sensitivity. So any character with flashes, I mean, they are just very, very tough to deal with. And obviously the best thing about Phoenix's flashes is you throw them and they pretty much instantly pop off. Whereas somebody like Yoru, it kind of like takes like a second. And then by that time, I don't know, Yoru's flashes are just way harder to use than somebody like Phoenix. And the uh, Phoenix is just very, very good on console. The second agent we have in A tier is going to be Sky. Sky is another one that is just so good all around the board. She is a very good heal for her team. She has a bird that can flash. She has a dog that you can use for recon. And then her ultimate also, I guess, is just more recon. Sky is a very, very good initiator, you know, overall. And the you could argue that she low-key could belong in S tier. She just does have a little bit of a learning curve. But yeah, Sky overall, very good pick. The third agent we have in A tier is going to be none other than Reyna. Now, when it comes to Reyna, I'll say this. She is by far the best solo climbing agent in this game, with the exception of, you know, maybe Clove. Clove is just busted out of this world, in my opinion. But yeah, Reyna, very good solo climbing agent, but just not the best duelist in terms of, you know, a team perspective. But I mean, she does still have flashes. She does still have some utility to help the team, but really just a menace of an agent for solo fragging. Moving on to the next agent in A tier, it is going to be another duelist, which is Raze. Raze is a very simple agent in my opinion. She just has very good movement with her double satchels, very good entry. And then she also has a grenade, which is amazing for, you know, clearing corners, killing enemies that are bunched up, which you'd be surprised at how many, how many kills you get just from throwing a Raze nade. It's like people, people see it and they're just like, ah, that ain't gonna do nothing. And then that kills them. So, I mean, Raze is just really, really good. And, you know, not to mention she has that rocket launcher, which you will get that five piece one day. I promise you, if you play enough Raze, you will get that five piece with the rocket launcher. And it is going to be the most satisfying thing of all time. The next agent we have in A tier is going to be KO. KO is up here for one very obvious reason. His flashbangs are extremely, extremely strong on console, and he does have two of them. He also has a suppressor that not only doubles down as, you know, an ability that 
takes away other people's abilities. It scans how many, you know, enemy agents are in the area, which is very helpful. I will admit KO's ult is absolute dog shit. I don't know why he goes into like an armor lock like this is Halo Reach or some shit, but uh, it's not very good, but we can look past that. The rest of his kit is just very, very good. The next agent we have in A tier is going to be Jet. Jet is just one of the best entry duelists in the entire game. She has smokes that she can dash into, and she has her updraft where she can get on objects that you know other agents just can't. And then her ult is just absolutely amazing when it comes to eco rounds. There's really not much to hate about Jet. She is just really, really good. And y'all can debate who's better between you know Raze or Jet, but at the end of the day, they are both very good, and you know they have their situations where they shine. Moving on to the seventh agent in A tier, we have Breach. Breach is definitely an agent that, you know, excels a lot more on certain maps than others, but the point still stands, he is so goddamn good. His stuns, his flashes, his ults. I mean, he's basically everything you would want in an initiator. And if you have a coordinated team, playing against Breach is just so annoying because even if the Breach is the bottom frag, he's still making an impact. The next character I have in A tier is going to be Killjoy. My opinion, she is the second best Sentinel in this game. Her setups are very good and she can lock down an entire site pretty much by herself. Her ult is also very good. Basically guarantees a round win as long as you don't mess it up horribly, which I do see some people do sometimes, but that is few and far between. If it's a good KJ, they're not going to mess up their ult. The next agent I have in A tier is going to be Sova. His scans make him by far the best recon agent in the game. And his ults also is basically like a free round win. I mean, you just listen for when the guy's defusing the spike and you use the ults. And like I said, free round win. Sova's just very good. Coming in as the 10th agent in A tier, we have the Omen. Omen is another very solid controller. He obviously has his smokes and then he has, you know, two teleports. Paranoia, which is absolutely insane, especially if you have a duelist who's actually pushing in off of it and not one that is baiting out your teammates like you usually get in ranked. And then obviously he does have, you know, his ultimate teleport where you can go anywhere on the map, which is kind of overlooked at times because it's not like, it's not the greatest ability in the game, but it is very good to get you guys out of a pinch if you need to teleport across the map and, you know, quickly plant the spike. Moving on to the final agent we have in A tier, it is going to be Viper. Viper obviously, you know, isn't your traditional controller, but she is very good for being able to rotate around the map with her poison wall. And uh, her ultimate is basically the closest thing you are ever going to get to a free round win on attack in this game. You just throw that shit down and you are not losing. If you lose it, I promise you that is your fault because it is genuinely hard to lose with that ult. Now moving on to S tier, it would not be right if we didn't start it out with Clove. Clove is just absolutely insane and she has basically everything you would want from a controller while also being a mini duelist at the same time. The reason I say she's like a mini duelist is her decay nade is extremely, extremely good, you know, for entering and just getting quick picks. And then her pick me up, don't even get me started on her pick me up. I don't know why, but that shit just feels like God mode and the speed boost it gives you. Why does it even give you a speed? Like who thought of that? She's just so goddamn good. Anyways, moving on to the second agent we have in S tier. It's gotta be Cypher. I mean, Cypher is easily the best Sentinel in the game. And he's also one of the most brain dead and mindless agents in this game. Because all you have to do to really get good on Cypher is look up best Cypher lineup insert site, insert map name, and you are chilling. You're, uh, I mean, that's literally all you have to do. That is all you have to do to play Cypher and you are going to be chilling. He is just so goddamn good. The next agent I have in S tier is going to be Neon. She is just so goddamn good. I mean, even on PC, she might be S tier, but on console, she definitely is because in this game, we have some of the craziest reticle friction close range. And when a Neon slides past you, like you literally can't even, you, you can't even hit her. I swear to God, you can't hit her. Like you can deadass just be one of the most brainless players with Neon and you're gonna get kills. I, I promise you, you're gonna get kills as long as you use the slide decently. Coming in as the second to last agent in this video and you know, the second to last agent in S tier, we have Gecko. Gecko is just so good as an initiator. I mean, him being able to plant and defuse the spike remotely with his wingman, 
that ability itself is just so underrated. And then, you know, the fact that he also has an insane flash that cannot be dodged, it literally has to be shot down and can also be combined with something like Arena Leer or anything like that. Like Gecko is so goddamn good. And the fact that he can recycle his ultimate, like, I mean, just if you don't have Gecko in S tier, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. And finally, coming in as the last character who should absolutely be deleted from the... All right, all right, let me stop. The last character in S tier is going to be Iso. I, I hate this dude with a burning passion. <sighs> because I, I just, I still don't think any character should just be, be able to eat a headshot for breakfast. I just, I don't think it's a thing. And be, being a player who plays Raze a lot, I have rocket launcher this dude and he's eaten it way too many times to count. He just pisses me off. Iso is just, he's an S tier character, but he pisses me off. That's all I got to say. Anyways, though, that is pretty much going to do it for my tier list. Let me know if you guys agree or disagree in the comments. Let me know if I was just insanely off on anything I put on this list. And just keep in mind, this is console based. It was not based on PC at all. So, you know, your experience may be a little bit different than mine if you're playing on PC. But as always, if you guys did end up enjoying this video, I would greatly appreciate it if you left a like and a comment letting me know what you thought. If you are new around here, it never hurts to hit that subscribe button. Anyways, it's been Gravely. Peace.